So we're trying to determine the instantaneous rate of change. We're trying to approximate the instantaneous rate of change of f of x equals x squared minus x at 0. And so the conceptual thing here is that instantaneous rate of change can be approximated by average rate of change over smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller intervals. smaller and smaller and smaller intervals that include the point you're interested in. And this is zero because this is zero. So the first thing we might do is we might calculate the average rate of change over the interval zero 0 0.5. We're going to do a sequence of these calculations, and the sequence will lead us towards better and better approximations. So I would look at f of 0 0.5 minus f of 0 over 0 0.5 minus 0. It's sort of lucky here that f of 0 is 0. 0 squared minus 0 is 0. So I know that this part I can just replace with minus 0. That's not always true, but in this case it is. In general, I'll be replacing this with whatever f of 0 is. And then you all have calculators and I don't. You have computers. So what is f of 0 0.5? Negative 0.25, you tell me? And then so we can do the minus 0 business. So negative 0.25 uh, over 0 0.5, which is, I double this, so I double that, so negative 0.5. Now that's a decent approximation, but this is still a pretty big interval. To get a better approximation, we want a smaller interval. So this is pretty good. A better approximation would be to do the average rate of change over 0. 0.0. It's from 0 to 0. 0.1. So in that case, I would have f of 0. 0.1 minus f of 0 over 0 0.1 minus 0. So I know that this is 0 just because I already calculated that. So f of 0 0.1 minus 0 over 0 0.1 minus 0 equals Nine. Well, that's pretty different. These numbers are pretty different. You might get hit for speeding on this one and not for this one. Sorry, it was important to do our better approximation. Now we can get an even better approximation how? Even smaller intervals. So can you give me another interval that's even smaller than this one? 0 0.001.
The smaller the interval, the bigger the smiley face. In terms of the in terms of the approximation, how many zeros did you say? Two zeros. All right. So you look at f of zero point zero zero one minus f of zero over zero point zero zero one minus zero, which is equal to negative point nine nine nine. And I'm just going to write a, a really big smiley face somewhere else. But even better approximation is the average rate of change over 0 to 0 0.00. I'm going to do four zeros now. Gives me f of 0 0.00001 minus f of 0 all over 0 0.00001 minus 0. Suspense is killing me. So do not say, please, and I understand why people do this, but this is not approximately negative 0.9999. There's a clear trend in terms of where your values are going. Where do you think this is headed as we get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter? Negative 1. So we want to approximate this. And our approximation suggests that the average rate of change of f of x at 0 is negative 1. You're allowed to guess what you think the exact value is, especially when you see a trend that's this clear. And so the conceptual thing that you need to understand is that if you want to approximate an instantaneous something, you can use an average something, and then you start tightening the interval tighter and tighter and tighter. The tighter and tighter and tighter you make the interval, the better and better and better your approximation gets in terms of what the answer is headed to.